Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna to be covering a subsurface scattering material. This should be pretty simple. It should probably take less than five minutes. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. First thing I'm gonna do is open up a new Blender document. I'm gonna call this subsurface material. I'm gonna save that to my desktop and then I'm just gonna delete my cube and delete the light. I'm gonna add in a mesh. I'm gonna add in the monkey. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a subdivision surface modifier. I'll just bump that up to three for both values and then shade auto smooth. Let's go to our light, our um, camera, set everything to zero, and then our X rotation to 90. And then we're just gonna bring this back on the Y axis, snap to it, and as you can see, we're facing our monkey. All right, so a couple other things I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add in an environment texture. And after we do this, we're gonna hop over to cycles. I'm just going to add in any HDRI will do. I think I'm going to do Sunrise. Let's go ahead and go to Rendered View. And let's go ahead and hop over to Cycles. Enable our GPU. And as you can see, there's nothing happening yet because we have to assign our material. So let's go ahead and click on our object here. And by default, it's going to have nothing. So let's make a new material. And then right here, under your principled BSDF, you want to just adjust this subsurface setting to 1. So now you can already see our subsurface is working, especially when you look towards the light source, you can see it's happening right here. So just like that, we already have that. Now the subsurface color is really what we're gonna wanna pay attention to here. So for example, if we want this to kind of shine through and look sort of blue, we can kind of adjust that right here, okay? And then these three values, these radius values are what you're really gonna wanna adjust. So I'm gonna show you guys what they look like all turned on and off. So if you turn the first one on to one, you're gonna get something like that. If you turn the second one on to one, you're gonna get something like this, which I think looks really cool. I would probably keep it on that. And then the third value being set to one, you're not gonna notice much of a difference. Now there's one more factor that is gonna greatly uh, change the way this looks. So I'm gonna set that middle value. Uh, the default value is going to be like 0.1. I'm gonna set that to one. And then the IOR down here, it's gonna say subsurface IOR you're gonna to wanna to adjust that as well. So if we do like one, you can see the light shines through much more. If we do two, you're gonna see that that light has a lot of a harder time getting through, similar to a glass material. Um, basically the, the IOR stands for index of refraction or how the light is handled when it passes through the material. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with like 1.25. You guys can adjust this to whatever value you like. Now remember, the key factor here is the way that the light shines through, right? So if I look at it from this angle, it's gonna look completely different, right? The goal is to get that light source to be behind your object because then you're really gonna see this subsurface material, right? So right here, it looks really cool. But you're probably thinking, Kenny, now I have to completely rearrange the camera. No, you don't. Let me show you a cool technique. So instead of rearranging the camera, we're actually just gonna rearrange the environment and rotate that environment. So I'm gonna go to my shading tab. I'm gonna to go to the world settings that I realize you guys can't see right now. The world settings right here. So click on world. Zoom out so you can see all your nodes. Add in a texture coordinate node and then add in a mapping node. And you're just gonna plug them in as follows. The generated goes into your vector of your mapping and then the vector of your mapping goes into your HDRI. Now switch back to render view up here. Snap to your camera and all you have to do is adjust this Z value and we can now place our HDRI wherever we like. That looks pretty cool. If you really wanna go for a dramatic effect, you can put the light source pretty much directly behind your object. That looks great. And then of course you can take your object, you can rotate it however you would like. I think I'm gonna give mine kinda of like some really cool rotation here. Maybe some rotation on the X as well, like it's looking down. I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, another thing you can do to kind of narrow in on your subject a little bit since we're kind of done with the actual material is you can click on your camera, go over to your depth of field option, enable that, and then you can select your object. Now you're not going to notice much of a change because you have to adjust the f-stop. So I'm going to turn my f-stop down to a very low value of 0.1 and as you can see we have this nice blurred effect. But it's a little intense so you might want to turn it back up to something like 1 or 0.5. You guys can play around with this value. And if you don't wanna select the actual object as your focal element, you can actually go ahead and select um, the distance uh, instead. Sorry, my, my face over there is getting all messed up. All right, so let me just show you how to do that. So X out of your object, and then go to your material preview, 
and you'll notice how you kind of have the edges already blurred. If you zoom into an edge like really, really close and you adjust your focal distance, get it to a point where one of your edges is very sharp. That looks good right there. So at about 7.8 meters, um, we are at a perfectly sharp edge there. So instead of selecting our actual object, you can now focus in on like just the ear or whatever part of the model you do want to. That looks pretty good. You guys can adjust the distance. That looks really, really nice though. 1080 by 1920 for our format. That looks great. Um, and then if we want to kind of take it a step further, we can add in a plane under our subject, bring it down below the subject, right about there. Maybe scale it up a little bit more. Um, and then maybe we can see if we can enable some caustics here. So I'm going to click on my object right here. Go to my shading, cast shadow caustics. Click on my plane, receive shadow caustics. Um, and then I'm going to shade this. I think I already shaded it auto smooth. We should be getting a little bit of caustics here. Let me go over to my light path settings. Bump everything up to 10 here. And make our total light paths 50. And then filter glossy is going to be, I'm going to be setting that to zero. And we should be getting some caustics. You can go ahead and add in your own light source as well. You can put that right over here. And then we can click on shadow caustics. Bump this power up to a thousand. And I just want to show you guys something real quick. I'm going to put this like kind of behind our object right there. So like right about there, kind of like where our sun like would be. And then you guys can like increase or decrease the radius. We should be getting caustics here. I'm not seeing them. So sorry about that guys. But I just want to show you guys kind of another way to do that. Um, this looks really good though. I think I'm just going to adjust the material down here to maybe something with like a low roughness and a metallic value. That looks pretty cool. And we'll maybe make it like a little bit darker as well. Maybe a gold color. That could look nice. That looks kind of nice. I, I see. I kind of like that actually, because it kind of contrasts the green just a little bit. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm just going to do one more thing. I'm going to duplicate our monkey, scale it down a little bit. And I just want to show you guys one more example of like how you can create kind of like a skin subsurface scattering. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this material. And then for my subsurface color, I'm going to make this, um, like a flesh tone, maybe like pink. And then for the actual color, I'm going to make it like something like that. And then this is where you want to mess with the radius um, of each of these. So it, it, the radius is, sorry, the radius kind of acts weird um, in terms of like how it's actually handling all this. Go ahead and pump up that value. As you can see, when you adjust these values, you get like completely different results depending on the combination that you use. Um, but you are able to actually achieve sort of like a skin tone if you use just the right combination here. I'm gonna try low values for each one. I'm gonna try 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and 0 0.25. <laughs> that actually looks really cool though. As you can see, when you change this, completely changes the way everything interacts. I love messing with the with these settings too. I was going for more of a flesh tone look, but that, that looks pretty cool too. Again, you guys can play with these values. I actually kind of like that. In a, in, a, in a weird way, I do like that. And if you guys want to just mess with just the hue, you can do that. Whoa. That looks pretty cool. And then, of course, you can adjust the IOR as well. You could, you could jump that up to two, which is going to give you like a more intense IOR. You can rotate your object. That looks cool. I just wanted to show you guys how to easily create a subsurface material there. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to duplicate my material and I'm just going to do like, oops, I'm going to do like a different color for this one. I think it's kind of cool. It's a little intense, but yeah. Whoa, look at that. I'll decrease that saturation a bit. This looks cool though. Um, I just want to show you guys kind of some options that you had here. 
Um, this is it. Those, that's your subsurface material. This is the tutorial, and I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, again, sorry, I kind of drag. Dra I tend to drag out my tutorials quite long, but I just want to show you guys as much as I can and provide as much value as I can. Again, the most important thing to remember here for your subsurface material is the lighting. Lighting is so much more important than you guys could ever even realize. If you don't have the proper lighting, you're not going to get the proper effect for your material. It's just that simple. Um, so experiment with your lighting, add different point lights, area lights, HDRIs, whatever you guys can to kind of spice up your scene. And just remember, if you want that light source behind, you're going to get a greater subsurface scattering effect. Because if I go ahead and rotate around here, you see how you can still see the subsurface scattering from this angle. But if I look at it from this angle, you're not going to be able to really tell like what's going on. You can only tell from the correct angle behind the sunlight. So I just wanted to show you guys that. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found value out of it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. Check me out on Patreon, Discord, Instagram. All the links should be included in the description below. And if you guys have any questions, make a comment down below. I will respond to your questions as soon as I can. You guys have a great day and I will talk to you soon.